Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Enter the Ether, the podcast all about the upcoming third-person MOBA ethereal clash of souls. Jelly, you stop that. You stop that. <laughs> I'm your host, the Mangus. <laughs> Joining me, as always, is Mr. Knees, first name Jelly. Yeah, Mr. Knees it is. It's Mr. Knees to all of you specifically, okay? <laughs> Jelly, <laughs> if you nasty. Can call me Jelly. <laughs> So How's yeah, it going, man, Goose? good. So you brought something up to me that I didn't even realize. This is a year. We've been oh, doing yeah. this for a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this episode will have been just past the year mark. So and it's interesting. When we started this up, there was a lot going on with Ethereal. And then it kind of tapered off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we thought that we really thought that they were they were ramping up for a release, and that's why we started this whole thing. But um I mean, as a result, though, like things did wind down there for a while, but they've really ramped up recently. So I think it's only appropriate that at the year mark of, of us <laughs> doing this, that things have really taken off. Um, a lot of you guys probably can't see it, but like with the testing, there has been so many changes and improvements made to this game. We talked about it last week, but I just don't I don't think you understand just how far they've come in like the past two months, two, mm -hmm. three months. Like Jelly, you know, because you, you're you part of the team now. I think that's, I, again, I'll say it again. I think that has a lot to do with the progression that we've seen from them is that you joined the team. And um, certainly a lot of the, the interactions that we get with the company are coming from you now. And you being probably the most enthusiastic of the community members you certainly know what the community wanted to know from ethereal and you've been putting that out to people and i think we all appreciate that uh great <laughs> deal <laughs> yeah man and that was my goal going in was being come being who i was in the community right the guy that nitpicked every little detail mm -hmm. right i think i had a lot of my ear to the ground on what the community was expecting and wanted um, and even prior to joining the team, I made a couple of videos kind of calling out UG and saying like, what's going on? Like there's, there's clearly something going on here. So it's been nice to be a part of the team and basically be able to have that feedback for them internally before it even ever gets to the community side of things. Right. So that's, it's been great. I've been loving it so far and I'm excited for the future with Ethereal for sure. Speaking of announcements, the latest announcement, um, from you guys, uh, specifically you, was that uh, you guys? Have, you guys have finished all the um, reviewing of the applications for testers, and you started the interview mm -hmm. process and all that. Yeah, we've actually interviewed all the people already too. So we've oh, gone great. through the last two weeks. Um, the testing leads all went through and interviewed all the candidates we wanted to interview that we thought stood out, and then have reached out to the ones that we wanted to onboard. So they're actually in the stages of filling out paperwork and getting it brought into the testing server as well. Okay, great. Are there going to be more servers opened up or is it still going to be 6v6 testing or is it going to be like a 6v6 over here and a 6v6 over here? And Ideally, we're going to run as many games as we can in one setting. Okay. So if we're going to, if we have 48 people and we can run four games simultaneously, we'll run four games simultaneously. So it's kind of a whatever comes up or if we have to test something specific, we can have two groups testing something specific, two groups testing something else or however it works out. Okay, but we'll great. run as many as we can with the people we have. So, all right, awesome. That that'll be good for me. I can actually uh, <laughs> <laughs> get some fresh meat in there. But uh, so, what we're going to be talking about um, this week is the Marina gameplay. Which, by the mm -hmm. way, like last week, I said I would like to see <laughs> Marina next for gameplay, and you knew, you knew at that time. I uh -huh. know you did. <laughs> that that Marina was back. next. After after we released the footage, I even went back and watched ETE. And when you said that, looked at my face and like watched, and you could definitely see this moment of me going like, "Uh huh, yeah, like Marina could be next." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. So the Marina gameplay, she looks really good. The like the kitty pool effect is gone. She has a like just a regular effect for for Riptide, and uh, she can shield herself, which I don't think she could originally, and um. Yeah, she just looks like a lot of fun. She looks like a fun support that can that can be aggressive when she needs to be, but she's definitely on the support side. Like you, you're saving your team more than mm -hmm. attempting to to take objectives and stuff, which I think is what you need as a support. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have I don't have 
a ton of games on Marina um, going into that gameplay. But I think it was one of those things of even myself playing that game specifically. It was like, wow, there's there's a lot of potential on Marina. There are a lot of things you can do. You can go the full damage build. You can go the kind of more healery support build. And there are options for you either way. Right. right? The fact that my carry felt confident enough to be like, okay, if, if you can just take that kill, just take it. Like, I'm not going to get there. Knowing that his Marina could do that because I was building damage is kind of nice at the same time. Now, she's not going to go out and 1v1 somebody 98% of the time. But <laughs> right. she does have that potential. I think she would be decent in the off lane because she does have the ability to heal herself with her bubble mm -hmm. and shield herself with her shields. I, I think she. Just I think if like you built her right, I think she could be. Annoying lane. Yeah, yeah, it would be it would be really annoying. You'd have to gank the shit out of that lane, or. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, Mar Marina looked like a lot of fun. And the other thing we're going to be doing today is now that we've actually seen a lot of these abilities in action, we're going to kind of talk about what which ones we think are the best and which ones we think are the worst i wouldn't say best and worst but least effective uh, you mm -hmm. don't want every ultimate to be super effective you want some some heroes to have really good abilities and like if they have you know super good abilities you can't also <laughs> give them a crazy awesome ultimate you know what i mean absolutely and I, th I think that kind of leads into my pick for the, I think, what I think is the least effective, and I'm probably going to get some shit for this. I think Noxus has the least effective ultimate. But it's okay. because her abilities are so great when you string them together. But by the time you're done stringing her abilities together, like, in order to really hit her ultimate to, to, to the best of your ability, you need to lock them down with her root. And then mm -hmm. drop the ultimate on top of them, but for the most part, when you're when you're throwing that root out, you're going to root them. You're going to throw her. God, what's the ability like the stars? I call it whenever. Oh, lightbound portal. <laughs> yeah, lightbound portal. Yeah, like you want to lock them down, hit them with the lightbound portal, burn them mm -hmm. down with the beam, and by by the time you're done with all that, they're not locked down anymore, and the ultimate is just kind of a follow up. But I think I think hers is probably the least effective. What what do you think, Jelly? I for me it's actually a toss up between Noxus and I'm gonna get hate for this one, Malaya. Okay, yeah, I can definitely see that. Uh, Malaya was a close second for me. Yeah, and so I, I guess I'll put Malaya as, as the least effective since you did Noxus. But as I've probably played between Talos and Malaya, those are my two most played characters in testing right now, and. Malaya's ultimate is only three seconds long. So yes, it's super effective in that you can't die for that three seconds, but three seconds in a MOBA is nothing. In yeah. a team fight, if you use that incorrectly or you're too, slightly too late on it, it doesn't matter, you're just dead. Like it, it three seconds is not long at all, um, but she's really strong otherwise. So it's one of those like, I understand why it's so short, but at the same time, it, you have to be on it when you have to press your ultimates in order yeah, to make exactly. it effective. It's with a like, split second. You're like less than 100 health. You got to press that button because if you don't, you're you're dead. Or if you waited too long trying to get something slightly better or did it too early. Like it's just, it's one of those that's really hard to use effectively. Like uh, her shield seems more effective than her ultimate because you aren't as sparing when you use it. Like mm -hmm. you, you, you use her shield. You don't feel bad about it if it gets wasted. You waste mm -hmm. her ultimate and you're... It's, like it nothing just, happened. Yeah. Cool. Nothing happened. Uh, thanks. <laughs> I do. I yeah, still think it's. Time. I still think it's a little more effective than Noxus because when you do nail it and get it right, it's life saving and and usually results in a kill. See, that's how I feel about Nox assault too. Is yeah. granted, there's one guy almost really good. I'll give him. I'll give him a shout. He is like our resident Noxus main right now in testing. And that man has done some magical things with Noxus that I was like, <laughs> I, I'm glad somebody's able to do this because it's one of those, like, I think about it in my head. I'm like, yeah, I could do that. Never works out that way. <laughs> but this guy, this is the guy that got killed five people with his passive because he rooted them, ulted them, used his lightbound portal and then died. And his passive burst down five people right then and there. Right. And it was like, okay, like I applaud you. Noxus is way better than I give her credit for. So <laughs> that's insane. All right. Um, most, most effective. What do you think is the most effective ultimate? Most effective. Honestly, I think Marina's ult. 
probably would have to go down as most effective. You think so? Really? I think so, because the if you're building her, if you build Book of Pandora as her first item, Book of Pandora's passive is that it gives any healing you deal, healing and shields are increased by a percentage. When you build that item and use her ultimate, you can heal like your entire team in one ultimate. Like you can you can turn the tide of a fight, pun intended, by pressing your ultimate key and your whole team is just feeling regenerated and you're doing damage to the other team on top of it. Um, and then when you get two Marinas doing that, it's even worse because you're trying to figure <laughs> out like which one is which and oh, <laughs> it's, it's nuts. But I would definitely have to put hers up there at the top yeah, I don't. I don't think anybody else's does what hers does. What it was about a you? Bit of a talk. I, I did think about Marina's because it, it really can turn the tides of a fight. Um, Leah's ultimate is also really good. It's mm -hmm. very disruptive, but I think it, it's it's not the most impactful ultimate. But I think you get the most use out of it is Talos's ultimate. Just being able to mm -hmm. just barrel in on top of somebody. You never feel bad about using his ultimate. You never, because it's on a fairly short cooldown, You and and you always just get some kind of effect out of it. You get mm -hmm. Talos on top of the enemy team, and that's where you want him to be. I really, I think his ultimate, for me, the way I, I use the ultimates is, 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 is probably the most effective one. Yeah, I mean, and Talos... I get the most use out of it. It, may, it might not be the most effective. I get by far the most use out of Talos's ultimate out of any of the ultimates. Yeah, and we actually... It's been a while since we'd made this change, but Talos' ultimate had a change to it where when he ults, based on however many passive stacks he has, so how many kills or assists he's helped secure, he gains armor and magic resist when he ults oh, for nice. a period of time. So... That makes him inherently more tanky based on the amount of stacks that he has when he ults and then also ties directly into his kick and his uppercut because both of those scale their damage scales with armor and magic resist. Right. So both of those things working together, I could definitely see Talos's ultimate being up there in terms of one of the most effective ultimates. I like that. It makes it to where you want to use his ultimate more aggressively as a part as 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 opposed to just as an escape. Which you can yeah. use it as an escape. I mean, it's a multi-use ultimate, but I like and that that's, you guys that's stack that on there. The reason we kind of did it was I was and I was telling them as the Talos guy, I was like, it's more effective most of the time to use my ultimate to get away than it is to go in. Yeah. Right. Like it's just there needs to be more incentive to do so. Um, and energy wasn't it. Like it was. Yes, you could refund energy for everyone you hit, but that really wasn't enough to justify using the ultimate as an engage tool. Right. But I mean. We were doing it on the extreme cases, but in the extremes, I was able to almost double my armor and MR using my ultimate going in. And so that's, I mean, that turns Talos into a very tanky person just off the cuff. So right. that's a, a big thing for him. It's kind of like what, what I was originally talking about with Talos' ultimate is that, it yeah, it gives stamina or energy back, but... Usually, when you're going, to, you're going to use it as an engage, you're going to engage with full stamina or energy anyway. So yeah, that, that mm -hmm. wasn't much of a uh, reward. I do like that you guys changed that. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, what do you want to do next? You want to do the uh, the risk reward abilities? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. That, you, uh, you, dude. You, you got some stuff <laughs> in mind here. Let's hear it. Uh, in terms of most effective, right click. I would hands down say it's Talos. Okay. Because his his ability to just when he goes into his frenzy and he increases his damage, right? That's a great part of it and it just makes him inherently stronger. That's great. The thing that I love about it is that it resets your basic attack animation when you use his frenzy. So you can when you're doing the combos with his abilities because they're all those multi-stage abilities, right? You can weave in an extra basic attack by using his right click in certain scenarios and getting and just amplifying your damage even that much further. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it catches people super off guard that you just go into frenzy and then you just wallop them and they <laughs> back the heck up. And, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to take minions. I don't want to farm today. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I, I would definitely put Talos at the top for me. What about you? I, I definitely get that. Um, for me, I think it's Marina. Like, 
just that displacement and and sort of stun, especially if you have a Dante right beside you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that it's super effective. If you if you can coordinate in comms and tell them, you know, I'm a, I'm about to about to call, then you you walk up, you do your sirens call, you you, you charm them and move them for you forward. The whole time Dante's using his right click to just. <laughs> being uh -huh. in on because that's a hard ability to, it's a hard to land all those shots and get the most effect that's why I don't think Talus's um, risk reward ability is, is is all that effective because it's hard to hit all those shots but if Marina is involved then oh yeah you get all those you, you land all of them almost guaranteed damage yeah, yeah exactly and the fact that it applies to all targets in an area it's not like single target granted it's a short range ability so it's Marina's putting herself out there to go up and try and right-click a bunch of people, but that thing is effective. Like, there's yeah. no question there. And I think in the Marina gameplay, it shows a lot, too, because it, there was a lot of times that I would just hold it. Be like, okay, if they even look like they're going to get away, that's when I grab them and say, no, 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 come back here. We're, we're dealing with <laughs> damage to you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's it's absolutely a crazy, crazy strong ability. And the cooldown reflects, because it's like a 28-second cooldown at level 1. So that thing is... <laughs> Not yeah. not cheap to use. Yeah, you can't you can't just throw it whenever you want to. That's for damn sure. Yeah. And then for least effective mangoes, who are you thinking? In terms of right clicks. God, I'm gonna get so much hate for this, but again, I'm gonna have to <gasps> I'm gonna have to say it's Noxus. Oh, okay. Whew. I thought you were gonna say Malaya and I was gonna rant. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. Her, hers is hers is quite effective. Um No, I, yeah, I think it I think it's Noxus. Um I think it's because the the risk outweighs the reward for that. You do get a lot of extra damage and like the mana reduction and everything. But God, moving slowly on her, you just you're just a big old move you're just a big old target and you just get you get wailed on. You've really gotta time that well or just know mm -hmm. that there's nobody or no jungler around you. No Leah's not gonna suddenly dive atop you after you use that, so yeah, and so that ability we're actually talking about making a change to, which should be effective soon, um, is changing that to the slow is up front, and then the effect is afterwards. Because so using it's like it a first, wind up, like she's collecting magic into yeah. herself, and so then, okay. she's she's slowed while she's collecting, and then for a period of time afterwards, she then gets the bonuses. I like that. I like that a lot. The way it works now, it requires her to be in the fight and then be slowed trying to get out of it and being who she is she's screwed yeah right it's not like talos who can then ultimate and get out or do has some kind of easy stuns that he can land to help survive through that slow after the end right she's not like that she'll just die she rotates her abilities and then she's dead afterwards so we wanted to make it that you can preemptively do that and so you can as you're walking into lane press your right click move a little bit forward and then unleash this burst upon right. people i like that a lot like yeah you could you could channel it under tower and then move forward and land your abilities yeah, yeah I, I like that a lot I, I enjoy that change look forward to that <laughs> <laughs> and then least effective that's that's hard because i think there's a lot they're all good in their own ways um hmm i would probably say that Leah Leah's is the least effective. The the speed boost, really. Yeah. Um, part of it is the amount of time that she can use it. It's pretty short in comparison. Mm -hmm. um, and in combat, I, I I guess I should rephrase. Least effective in terms of, I guess, using it as it was intended. Right now, what we're seeing with a lot of Leah's is. They use their right click in combat to zip around side to side and dodge a big, dodge abilities, dodge attacks, and all those things. The ability is designed in such a way that the last thing you should want to do is take more damage while in combat. Right. So it, the fact that they're only or almost exclusively using it in combat shows that there's a problem in, in that design. <laughs> and that's the kind of thing um, that you would only realize through testing, I think. Oh, 100%. Yeah, and it's something you would that, never we, that we've instituted a little bit that if she's in combat, she only gets half of the speed increase, but still has the full downside. Oh, so it's okay. like a if you're gonna use this, you better be sure that you're using it for the right reasons. Yeah. Um. But so I think 
in terms of everybody else, I think she probably has the least effective of them all. It's got its uses, no question there. <laughs> but uh, that's it. I think that's the one for me. Okay. Do you Though wanna... I would say there's a runner-up for best that I'm just now thinking of is okay. Aron's right click. Aron's right click. Oh, yeah. That thing is oppressive sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Where he just he just runs right in and just oh look you're all feared sucks to be you guys Where my whole team's really <laughs> happy right now like <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah I completely forgot about a run <laughs> yeah that one's good do you do you want to run down the gamut that you want to do what the rest of the abilities or do you want to just sure we could I, I think we could go from top to bottom on uh, the right clicks go T to B oh no no I meant like. Do you want to do Q's now and then E's, or do you want to... <laughs> oh, uh, be sure, why not? Let's do it. All right, all right. Well, okay, so Q. Um, see, I this is where I'm going to fail, because I don't know a lot. I, I'm going to say the least effect of Q is Dante's with the uh, his piercing shot. Interesting, okay. I just never seem to be able to put that to good use. Like, I want to <laughs> use it to both kill minions and hit the enemy Dante or the enemy Marina. And I never mm -hmm. seem to be able to do it. Um, it always seems to slow me down at times that I don't want to be slowed down. So that that's, that's my vote for least effective is Dante's Q. Okay. Um, for Q's. So I actually, I think this might be slightly controversial in and of itself. Um, I think my best and least effective Q are the same ability, but for different reasons. Ooh, okay. So least effective and, and most at this point is Aron's Q. All right, all right. Aron's Q is terrible if the enemy isn't blazed. But it's super short range. It doesn't do too much damage. It's mostly meant to like execute minions at that point. But if you throw another ability on them first and they're blazed and then you land the Q, that thing will deal so much damage, it's ridiculous. And it should, right? He's landing yeah. He's landing combos at that point. But, oh my god, sometimes an Iran walks up to you in Qs, and you're like, oh, okay, that was nothing. And then the next time, you're blazed, and he hits you. And you're like, oh, I'm half health, thanks. Okay, cool, <laughs> I'm, I'm out, thanks, uh, I'm going back to base. Um, the two of those, like, but yeah, the... the I'm glad it has that disparity, right? Where it really wants you to use another ability first to get that blaze status. Yeah. But holy crap, sometimes is it just insane. My vote for most effective, and correct me if I'm wrong, Noxus's laser beam is on her Q, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's most effective. I love that thing. <laughs> I love that laser beam. It's the exact opposite of what I was talking about with Dante. Like, with the laser beam, what I want to be doing is clearing minions while also hitting enemies. Mm -hmm. I can always do that with the laser beam because it's so easy to, to channel and manipulate, whereas I can't really do it with Dante. Plus, it goes through walls. It just it just deals a crap load of damage. You, mm -hmm. She has her roots, so boom, you just... <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, no, absolutely. That, that ability is so much fun to use, too. When yeah. you get dam solid damage or a kill with that thing, especially through walls, you just you just feel like the best player in the game. You're just like, <laughs> yep, I'm just the best. Thank you very much. I love that ability so much. It's so much fun to use. Yeah. Now, her other abilities, because I'm probably going to rank her top at a lot of other, because I think her abilities, <laughs> like I said, her ultimate wasn't all that useful and her right click wasn't all that useful, but her other abilities are spectacular. Her yeah, she's insane. Yeah, I'm okay with her ultimate being ranked to the lower end of effectiveness because her the rest of her kit is just off the off the wall strong. Yeah. Um, so for E abilities, who would you say is your least your least effective E? Ooh, least effective E. I don't know. I'm gonna have to think about it. You go. You go. You go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I honestly. Despite it having its uses, Dante's grenade is pretty low on the on the totem pole for me. Okay, yeah. Um, it has its use cases sometimes, but for the most part, like I toss it out. It, it, maybe it's because we played Extra Life Mangoose, and that grenade one shot literally everything. <laughs> um, but right now, when I use it, I'm just like, oh, you know, it did 50 damage, cool, and applied a 30% slow. It never feels like super effective to me. Um, 
And I guess I'll blame Extra Life because, yeah, it was always the most fun thing to toss out there and just annihilate people with. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, though. It's it's a pretty good ability. It's not that bad. But, I mean, Dante shouldn't have really effective abilities. He should be relying on his his basic attacks. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I think that would be the one I would put at the least effective. I don't like a Ron's. Okay. I think that's my least effective one. Or you just the grab? The grab is you think Aron's least effective ability? Wait, that's the grab. Okay, what's yeah. the what's the meatball? Meatballs are. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No. <laughs> the meatball. I, like, I, grab I don't. Mangoose? What? I don't. I don't. I don't like the meatball at all. <laughs> and now people that <laughs> haven't seen Aron's gameplay are going meatball. What the heck are they talking about? <laughs> I don't know. I think I might have to go with you with 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 Dante. I don't, that grenade is just it's hard to land and it doesn't deal that much damage and mm -hmm. you think you're going to catch people that are running away and it just never it never chips enough to to, to, to kill. Yeah, for the most part it's it's a you use it for the slow kind of ability and that's it. And even then, it's it's hard to land. So it's one of those I wish the slow was better on it for that when you did land it, it was effective. Like it was that extra extra thing. But for best, I no question have to go with the boy uh, Talos because he gets two stuns out of the deal. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's hard to well, say it's the best. It's a slow and then a stun, right? No, it's a, if if he lands the first, the kick is a stun, and then the second's a knockup. So okay, it's okay. not technically a stun, <laughs> but it counts. Um, and he has to land the first to get the second. On a myth specifically, it's not like he can just kick minions and then knock somebody yeah. up a mile away. But that ability is insane. If you're weaving his damage in correctly, you can take a myth from full health to half health, no problem in one combo with just that ability. Yeah, it is pretty effective. So I get confused between the E's and the R's. Leah, her dive is that on her E or her R? That's her R. Yeah. That's her R. See that for the most part, movement abilities are on the R. Okay, that's they're a good always, way to think about it. Almost then. always the ability three. I, th I think I might just have to agree with you again because that the mighty kick, mighty uppercut. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's when somebody doesn't respect Talos and walks right up in his face. It's like okay, thank you for the double stun yeah. here. I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> I right, well, I guess we can go with the R's then. I've already the said R's? my I... least effective is that damn meatball from Iran. I don't know. I can't. <laughs> I just can't land that slow ass. Uh, the R's are hard because there are a lot of good R abilities. A lot of good R yeah. abilities. Um, for least effective... I want to... Uh, probably would say Talos... Or not Talos. Malaya's Dash, actually. Really? Yeah. Man, I like her Dash. I think... I think the others all have their like really good use cases. Mm -hmm. um, specifically, Iran's meatball like just is that it applies blaze, right. so then you can go in and use his Q and just wallop somebody. So it's one <laughs> of those like it, it's if I was doing the ability straight, I would agree with you. It's probably Iran's meatball. Um, in terms of other effectiveness, once you use them, I don't. I wouldn't say that one, but yeah, Malaya Dash. Is just a dash. Like there's literally nothing fancy to it. She gets two of them. Yeah. It's the most frustrating thing to play against sometimes because Malaya just pop, pop, <laughs> oh, and then she's gone. Great, thank yeah. you. Except if you're a skifter in the Marina gameplay where you can't jump up a wall after two tries. <laughs> just, just saying. I just, you know, I may have first blooded skifter as Marina. Calling you so... out, skifter. Calling you out. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> um. But then, what about most effective R's? This I is think, this I'm, is what probably... like. I've already given mine this away. I think it's Leah. Leah's. Yeah. I'm I'm just thinking about what I've been screwed over by. Mm -hmm. And then Leah just pouncing into lane when you don't even see it coming. And then there's always follow up from whoever you're laying against. And that, that there's, I get destroyed every time Leah goes in. Yeah, I'd probably agree and, with you. Leah's she, are... does, she doesn't give a shit about towers. It's just always. I do, she just goes in. It doesn't yeah. matter. <laughs> You can see the Leah mentality in the Marina gameplay. Almost all the gameplays, actually. But yeah. 
I, Leah dives me twice. It's like, what the heck? I was doing nothing. I was sitting under tower. What do you want from me? I, what did I say a long time ago? I said that Leah was going to be Chimera with wings. God damn it, if she isn't. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. You're She's not just wrong. all go. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, Leah R is up definitely, I would say, the most effective. Honorable mention, though, has to be uh, Lightbound Portal. That ability, if you yeah. land that root on somebody... On, on a group of people, minions, myths, whoever it is, that ability does so much damage, it's ridiculous. And for for real, you don't even need to land the 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 um the root a lot of times. If you're good with lightbound portal, like I've been able to land naked lightbound portals and just mm -hmm. hit pretty much all those little stars coming out. <laughs> Dude, that ability yeah, that ability is really strong. It's yeah. definitely up there. It's, it's definitely way stronger after you land a root, but it is really good for lane clear. You can root the entire enemy minion wave and then lightbound portal and get a. F and one ability that I think is underutilized in testing, especially, but maybe in the, when the game releases as well, is Talos's R. Because every myth you landed on, you reduce your cooldowns by one second. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So if you get into a team fight and do one good spin, yeah, all of your abilities are off cooldown again. So you can just run in there. Spam your abilities off cooldown. Use your R. Spam your abilities a second time, and that that does work. And that Partly, bleed, that in, bleed does a lot of work too. Oh my god, that bleed has killed me so many times. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Where I finally get the last hit on him, and I see him bleeding. I was like, great, thank you. I'm just dead. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All that, right, and then we've done ultimates already. Yeah, so I think that's it. That's I mean, we it. can't re can't really do passives yet. Mm hmm. Um, class abilities will do when they're all implemented. Right. But yeah, I think overall, I think testing's reaching that point where it's getting the my new details are starting to be what matters. It's not so much yeah. the massive balance swings anymore. Now it's really getting those fine details to bringing everybody in line or relatively the same line as each other with their own strengths and weaknesses accordingly. You guys already addressed the thing that had concerned me the most about balance which was the items like some of the items were just stupid mm -hmm. but you guys <laughs> you guys addressed that that's yeah we went through and changed all the items of course and that's something some items don't get built right so occasionally one will get built and we'll be like whoa what was that that's not the intended <laughs> effect um like for instance in the marina gameplay there was a bug with chaos scythe which the allied malaya had that the instance where Dante goes from half health to zero, just mm -hmm. instantaneously, that was a bug with one of the items, that the item was procking off of itself. Oh, so it just ramp up and- So it just, it just ramped itself to infinity and just deleted him when he hit the trigger for the item. So, nice. <laughs> um, nice. One of those things that until it gets built, you may not realize that that's what happens. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's definitely a work in progress, but the items, they are the big thing that we're taking a look at now that the myths are in a good balanceable state well all these new testers coming in that that should that should cover your items i'm sure you're going to realize a lot of weird interactions that you didn't know before because people are absolutely going to be building all sorts of crazy shit we had it's long since been fixed but uh disruptive shield returned physical damage you took to the person that dealt it or mm -hmm. in a circle around you actually um what we found out is that disruptive shield if two people had disruptive shield it would just endlessly bounce the damage back between them <laughs> and would kill server performance because it was just bouncing to infinity back and yeah. forth. Oh man. But it was one of the funniest things to figure out. We're like, <laughs> what the heck is this? <laughs> How did you uh, figure that out? Like did you? So I think it was somebody bought disruptive shield mm -hmm. and saw something weird happening. And so everybody bought Disruptive Shield, and we all like stood uh, okay. in a group together, and just one person <laughs> smacked. And it just, you see the server frame rate just go from where it's at and just tank. And you're like, oh, oh you know, maybe that's a problem. So. Imagine like hitting the gong, like all the ripples. <laughs> oh, man. But that's also part of the fun of testing is finding some of that stuff. And you're like, yeah. okay, interesting. That's amazing. I like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, shit, I think that's about all I had. Uh, you got anything, yeah. Jalen? No, I think that's all I've got as well. Uh, hopefully I didn't piss off Noxus fans too much. I, I love Noxus. <laughs> I do. She's one of my favorites to play. 
<laughs> I just happen to think that two of her abilities are probably the least effective out of all of them. But the rest of her abilities more than make up for it. Absolutely. Absolutely, they do. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, yeah. I, I guess that's going to close it out for this week. That Our, our, our year one-year anniversary. I guess we should have done something special, but... Should have got, like, poppers or something that I could yeah. <laughs> explode on screen. <laughs> <laughs> we needed your kazoos. But all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so with all the more testers coming in and all all the changes that are going to arise from that, hopefully uh, hopefully we can get everybody or at least as many people as possible to come in and play this game with us um, as soon as, as we can. But until you get that chance, I hope you all join us as we enter the ether. Mangoos! Shout out to channel members Foolish Blood Hunter, Jelly Knees, and Meow Mix for Men.